conflict going on in Ukraine over the most recent two years. Some have called it the most important geopolitical event in Europe since the end of the Cold War. Having grown up in the capital city of Ukraine, Kiev, I've been following events on the ground very closely. But what I found uh, when discussing the situation with most people is that they tend to get overwhelmed by the complexity of events, and as a result, have stopped paying attention to the news. My goal here today is to give you just a brief overview of the, of, of the events that have led to the present situation, and hopefully give you a better understanding. So Ukraine gained its independence in 1991, after the fall of the Soviet Union, and ever since then, it struggled to maintain a balance between Russia on the east and the EU and Europe uh, to the west. In fact, the Ukraine translates as the borderland uh, from Russia. Um, so the story starts in November of 2013 when the then president, uh, Viktor Yanukovych, who many saw as a corrupt kleptocrat and the Russian puppet, um, failed to sign a free trade agreement with the European Union. Now, signing or not signing this free trade agreement wasn't a big deal in, in practical terms, um, but many people saw it as symbolic in terms of, uh, as it was supposed to signal a shift in Ukraine's economic policy away from, uh, from Russia and towards Europe. Um, so when the president, after many months of promising to sign this agreement, uh, backed away at the very last minute, many people were shocked, um, particularly because he ended up accepting a bailout package from Russia at that same moment. Um, so this led to a first small-scale protest in Kiev's central square, which is called the Maidan. Um, but when the government attempted to crack down on these protesters and evict them by force, uh, instead of dying down, the protest gained momentum. Um, and soon, what started off as a movement with several hundred people grew to one with several hundreds of thousands. Um, eventually, the government lost credibility and the president was forced to flee the country um, and he fled to Russia. Uh, this, of course, paved the way for new elections, which is how the current president, who many see as a far more uh, pro-European candidate, was elected. The story may have ended there, if not for two things. First is that Ukraine is a pretty divided country. Uh, the people in the East speak Russian. Um, they tend to associate closely with Russia for political, economic, uh, and historic reasons. Whereas the people in the Western part of the country, they speak Ukrainian, they consider themselves to be European, um, and they would prefer uh, if Russia had nothing to do with Ukraine's domestic affairs. Um, and the second important part to mention is that Russia was not just going to stand idly by and let its influence uh, in Ukraine, which it saw as extremely important, uh, both from a foreign policy perspective and a security perspective, uh, disappear overnight. Uh, so Russia naturally had to come up with some sort of response. And that response would be the annexation of Crimea. Uh, so Crimea is a peninsula located in the southern part of Ukraine. Um, it's has strong historical ties to Russia. Um, a lot of ethnic Russians live there. It also happened to have a large Russian naval base. Um, so what, uh, so as the pro-European protests in the central and western part of the country were dying down, uh, the pro-Russian protests in the southern part and the eastern part of the country were just getting started. And what happened in Crimea is that a number of armed men in unmarked uniforms started arriving in uh, key government buildings in the peninsula. Uh, the media would later call these guys little green men. Um, and uh, the Russian president would later admit that they were actually Russian soldiers. Uh, but these little green men soon announced themselves uh, as, the, as fully in control. Um, and they also uh, announced that there would be a referendum held in a few weeks' time, where the people, the people of Crimea would uh, decide whether to stick with Ukraine or join Russia. Um, when the referendum was held a few weeks later, um, nearly 90% allegedly voted to join Russia. Um, so this was an outcome the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, gladly welcomed. 
fact, he announced a few days later that he recognized the referendum as legitimate um, and welcomed Crimea into the Russian Federation with open arms. Um, the West, of course, was far less enthused. Uh, many had seen this as a referendum held at gunpoint, uh, and as a result, completely illegitimate. And this was what prompted uh, the first round of sanctions against, uh, against Russia by uh, the EU and the US. Now, while Russia had managed to secure its interests in Crimea this way, it still needed some sort of lever to put pressure on the central government in, uh, in Kiev. Um, so what it did was instigate a similar type uh, revolution in the eastern part of the country. Um, so while the government in, uh, in Kiev was still in disarray after the, the revolt and the overthrow and the annexation of Crimea, um, similar little green men started arriving in, in, in government buildings in the eastern part of the country. Um, and similar to what happened in Crimea, they soon declared themselves to be in charge and not subordinate to the central government. Uh, when the government finally got its act together and attempted to send troops to restore order, uh, what they found was that this group of men that they thought were a ragtag group of uh, separatists mm -hmm. actually was a formidable fighting force. And that's largely due to Russian weaponry and Russian training. Um, so the conflict ended up erupting, um, and thus far, nearly 6,000 people have died. Uh, most of them have been civilians. And that includes the 298 people that died when the Malaysian, uh, when Malaysian flight MH17 was shot down over eastern Ukraine, allegedly by pro-Russian rebels, although denied despite a lot of evidence to the contrary. Um, now, currently there's a ceasefire in place, but many don't expect this ceasefire to hold and rather see it as just a stepping stone um, towards the resumption of hostilities. Just to briefly recap, um, the, what was a pro-Russian government in Ukraine was overthrown after it failed to sign a uh, free trade agreement with the European Union by popular protests. Um, that led to the election of a new pro-European government. Um, and the Russian response to this was to annex Crimea uh, and then uh, start a revolt in the eastern part of Ukraine, uh, which led to a conflict that continues to this day. So while I've given you just a very brief overview of events leading up to the present situation, I hope it gives you some context uh, for understanding what's going on. Thank you. Thank you.